So, I've been using this lens, the Fuji 16-80mm f4.0 for 3 years now, at first with the Fuji XS10, now with the Fuji XH2, and so I would say there's certainly lots to say about this thing. And so, let's get started. Oh, do you want maybe a spoiler about this lens? It's great, you should buy it, but you know, let, let's start with the video and let's find it out why. So welcome back here to my YouTube channel, I'm Simone Bertolotti and today I feel pretty bad, you know, there's spring, there are lots of allergies, so I don't feel pretty well for this video, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And so to talk about this lens, the Fuji 16-80mm, I will start from literally the basic. And the basic and main thing about the lens is the focal length. And this lens is pretty particular because it goes from a 16mm that we can consider a wide-angle length to an 80mm that is sort of a starting telephoto. And so, as you can understand, going from 16 to 80mm, there's literally lots of versatility and that's why this lens is pretty appealing to lots of people. The second thing to mention about this lens is the aperture. In fact, this lens is pretty nice on this side because it has a constant aperture of f4.0. So if you shoot at 16mm, you will have f4.0 and if you go to 80mm, there will not be any change on the aperture and it will stay on f4.0 and this is positive, but you know, I don't like pretty much the aperture of the lens, but we'll talk about this later. And moving instead on the dimension and especially the weight, for sure it's not light because it's about half a kilogram. And especially if you mount it, for example, on a quite heavy camera, like in my case, the Fuji X-H2, the combo of lens plus camera is not light at all. But I mean, going from a 16mm, as I said before, to an 80mm, if you consider all these, half a kilogram is not that much. And the other two important things to say about this lens is that the diameter of the filter is of 72mm, if you want to care about it. And instead, another important thing is that this lens is weather resistant. So maybe I've been using it throughout these three years, for example, when it was not raining, but there were coming down some drops. And so in those cases you can stay calm because you know that this lens is not waterproof but it can take some water, some drops and so that's not a big problem. Now in most of the reviews of for example this lens but even other products the price is usually at the end of the videos but I believe that in this case we need to do sort of the opposite because we need to consider that you can buy this lens new so you can buy this standalone but even you need to remember and you need to know that this lens is a kit lens and in my case for example i bought it at first with the fuji xs10 into the kit and then when i bought the xh2 i've already made a video of why i switched from the xs10 to xh2 and when i switched to xh2 i bought it again into the kit so if you give a look to the prices on the fuji webs for example in italy where i live the price of the lens standalone is of 949 euros but instead if we make the difference from buying for example a Fujifilm X-H2 or a Fujifilm X-T5 in the only body version or in the kit version with the 16-80mm. If we make this difference you're gonna see that this lens will have a value of about 500-550 euros so that's definitely a lot lower than the original price and instead if you give a look to the US website of Fujifilm the lens standalone is gonna cost you around 799 dollars but if we made the same difference between the only body and the kit with the 1680, you're gonna see that the price is gonna be about around $500, $520. And so, as you can understand, there's a big difference from buying this lens standalone or buying it directly at first into the kit. Considering all these prices that we've seen, I strongly believe that this lens does make sense if you buy it straight into the kit with your camera. But you need to remember that for all of the cameras this lens is not available. Like, for example, if we give a look to the Fuji XS20, this lens is not 
a kit lens and so in those cases I would evaluate if you really need a 1680 which for sure is a pretty versatile lens but in these cases I would firstly think if you really need a 1680 or maybe you prefer only a wider lens or maybe only a telephoto or maybe both of them so you need to understand if you maybe want only one lens and if you want only one lens this lens is I believe the right for you rather than for example an 1855 which is there's you know a little bit of shorter gap of the focal length and so if you want a solo lens this one I would say is perfect as I've done in my case starting from the SS10 and now with the X2 but if you want more lenses you need to firstly think if you really need this or maybe you need like two separate lenses. Before continuing with this video I would like to thank you for the 500 subscribers that we've reached like last week so I'm pretty happy about it that's so important for me and for this video if you're enjoying just leave a like and maybe if you want subscribe I would really appreciate it but now let's not waste any time and let's get back to the video. At the start of the video we have talked about the versatility of the constant aperture going from an f4.0 at 16mm till an f4.0 at 80mm but you know this aperture in my opinion has a problem which is not you know a problem related to the system of the aperture of this lens because it's great you know considering that it's a kit lens but the problem in my opinion is exactly that f4.0 as you can understand having on a lens a max aperture of f4.0 is not that great because basically it brings two problems I would say. The first one is that with f4.0 not much light is coming into the lens and onto the sensor so basically if you are for example shooting at night or shooting with some low light situations and f4.0 is not perfect and you need to go up with the shutter speed or the ISO and the second problem is that with an f4.0 you don't have a pretty great bokeh effect in the background. And on this topic of the bokeh effect is something I would say pretty subjective because in my case when I'm shooting photos an f4.0 is I would say sufficient but when I shoot videos like for example on YouTube I don't like the f4.0. In fact for example at the moment I'm using a cinema lens, a Siri cinema lens I've already made a video about it so you can maybe check it out but this one has an aperture of T1.2 which is basically a sort of f1.2 and as you can see there's you know a really important bokeh and really strong bokeh effort around me and so instead on the 16-80mm from Fuji I would have preferred for the light and the bokeh both maybe a 2.8 would have been I would say pretty better. Now we come to basically the center of the video about this lens. The quality. How is the quality? Not the build quality. That is good. How is the image quality on this lens? It's great. You know I have been using it for three years shooting photos, shooting videos in lots of different sceneries using an XS10, an XH2, I even tried the XT5 with this lens and I have never had any particular problem. For sure there's not in my case lots of comparison because I've owned only this Fuji lens but you know first of all if you are here if you're watching this video that's because you want to buy it in the kit and so if your aim is to get the best kit lens this is the best kit lens and the quality is great. I've never had any problem like the sharpness or even the contrast but if you look for for example other reviews about this lens you can see that the people that have been reviewing it have been pretty happy about this product so you know the quality is not a problem. Now for example you are seeing some photos and some videos that I've taken for example in the last period or throughout these three years and as I've said you know you can do literally lots of things with this lens because considering that you can shoot for example some wide angle photos or videos but you can even go further and push for example to some a sort of telephoto lens and this is pretty positive but even for example with this lens I've been shooting for example the Milky Way and so you know you can take this lens as a sort of an all-around but if you maybe want an in-depth video 
of photos and videos and all those tests about this lens just let me know down in the comments and maybe you can even write me if you want some particular test like in cities or maybe with some particular settings so just let me know what you want to see in that video so that I can prepare it and then bring it to you here on the channel. We have already said that this one is basically a great kit lens but there's even more because this lens has even the optical image stabilization and this is literally great both if you're shooting only photos or even maybe even some videos because for the videos that's obvious if you're shooting especially handheld the stabilization will help you but even if you're shooting photos you can trust more your lens and your camera just because if you do some micro movement for example with your hand the final image will have less blur if you activate the optical image stabilization but let's consider that maybe you have an older Fuji camera without the stabilization of the sensor and in this case the Fuji 1680mm lens will do part of the work so the optical image stabilization of the lens will work which is definitely better than just having a lens without any sort of stabilization because you need to consider that not every lens nowadays have the image stabilization like in my case i have a manual cine lens as i said before of siri and this lens doesn't have any sort of stabilization so it's great to have it on a kit lens one of the final things about this lens is the autofocus and on this one I want to go literally straight to the point. I've been shooting at yeah, photos and videos, okay, that's good. But I've been using even this 16-80mm at circuits, so at motorsport races and trust me, those cars go literally fast and I've never had any particular problems. As you can see now, I shoot like Formula 1 cars or even other prototypes and I would say that the result with this kit lens, remember this is a kit lens. The autofocus works pretty well. Apart from this, you need to consider that nowadays the autofocus depends more on the camera that you're using. For example, in my case, I've seen a big step up from the XS10 to the XH2, but still, this lens, the 16-18mm, does a pretty great thing, pretty great work. So, the autofocus is not a problem, you not have any particular issue. Overall, after three years of testing this lens, even with different cameras, I would say that you know it's not perfect for sure. This is a, remember that is a kit lens, but in my opinion, it provides a really high level in most of the cases. Even I would say a really really high level considering the price, because you know if we do the difference from buying a only body to buying a kit with a camera and this lens as we have seen it has a price of about a value of about 500 euros or dollars and i would say it completely worth every single money every single euro or dollar that you put into this product and so if you want to have an only all around one gear lens this one in my opinion for fuji is the great and the best choice but instead if you want to have more lenses first of all you can consider this one to be your all-around lens but maybe if you want some more higher level lenses you can buy like a wider and a more telephoto two different separate lenses but you know this depends on what you want how many money that you want to spend on your gear and all those subjective things so now I would say thanks for watching, thanks for joining into this video, leave a like if you enjoyed it, especially leave a comment if you have maybe a question or something that you want to understand of this lens, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. So guys, I would say that's all for this one, that's all for this full review of the Fujifilm 16-80mm f zero. and I will see you guys in the next one. See you soon, bye, have a nice day.